Hello, my name is Katrina. I'm a graphic designer and I also run a small business and Etsy shop where I sell cards, stickers, and what we're going to be talking about today, planners. So I'm going to teach you how to do a wire bound book. That's what these are. This style of binding is a wire bind, also called wire -o sometimes. So I'm going to teach you how I make these. There is some equipment needed for this, so I'm just going to go over and show you all the products you need to make a wire bound book. So what you're first going to need is your pages. You can cut these yourself or you can just use like note paper, but what I do is make planners. So I just have this, these pages, they're double side printed and black and white and they're just basically an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper dead cut down the center and that makes it a lot cheaper rather than doing other sizes. And then for the cover, I just have these, same thing, eight and a half by 11, cut in half, and I have two, one for the front cover, one for the back. These are coated one side, and then they have a UV coating on one side. Inside, no print at all. So we have those, and then the last thing we need is the wire binding itself. This one, the length is 11 inches, so I need these to cut it down. These aren't anything fancy, these are just wire cutters I already have. If you don't have wire cutters, you can use scissors, but it's going to be a bit harder and you're probably going to hurt your scissors in the process. And then, of course, the last thing you need is a wire binder. I'm not going to lift it up to show you, but I'll insert a clip. Um, this one is a pretty basic model. I just got it on Amazon for about $200. Pretty sure it was like pretty much exactly $200. I'm in Canada though, so it might be a different price where you are. It's just a basic model, it's not anything fancy. I did a lot of research and this one seemed pretty good on reviews. I am going to go over like more details about the specific machine and like how to actually operate it at the end of this video. So if you want to stick around and learn more about the machine, that'll be at the end. Also, I'll go over how to buy the wires because I know it can be confusing, there's a lot of measurements, and I'll just kind of go over what those all mean. But for now, let's just get started with the binding, and if you want to learn more about that, you can stick around at the end. So we're going to get started actually binding, and the first thing we're going to do is do the punch. Let me just double check this. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get started with the actual binding, and the first step you're going to need to do is punching the papers along the side. I always like to test out with just a scrap piece of paper um, just because if you have it to the wrong setting if you have it cinch instead of punch it can mess up your paper as well as if your little tray is too full then that'll also mess up your punch so it's always good not to risk it especially if you have something printed and just to do it with a scrap piece of paper make sure everything's lining up and looking at that it's also good to make sure that these are centered sometimes you can have like a little chunk come out of here so this one's looking good so I'm gonna get started this machine it does say right on it that it does about 12 pages per punch but you have to be careful if you're using like a thicker paper stock like this one is a bit thicker so I usually do about six to eight punches six to eight punches six to eight pages at a time I have tried to do 12 and it just messes it up so definitely start conservatively if you're not sure I would say if you're doing like a common printer paper, like a 20 pound bond, then definitely do the 12, then definitely do the 12 pages. But if you're doing something like I am where you're trying to sell it or you're writing on it, your paper is probably a bit thicker. So start small and you can move your way up when you're feeling ready. So first thing I'm going to do is align, align the paper and then put it in to the machine, align it with this here, and then push it fully into the back. And then the fun part, you're going to punch it down, pull it up, move that out of the way, and then you've got a punched piece of paper, papers. So I always just take that and put it face down so I can keep adding to the pile. If you're worried about losing, like, order, just do it like this and then you can easily transfer it to the next if that makes sense. I know it can be a bit confusing when you start it. So once you do that you're going to repeat that step about 30 to 40 times until you're finished 
all your pages. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, which it sounds like a lot, but it goes by quickly, I promise. So once we've got all the pages punched, our next step is to do the cover pages. So for these, it's basically the same as the other pages. Um, you're just going to punch them. It's not the best because all my pages, there's no clear cut front or back. But you're going to take what is the front cover and put it upright. So if you're looking at it, it's like the front page of a book. And then you're going to put that down and then you're going to take the back cover and make sure the text is the same way. So if you go like this and open it, you can read the text both ways. Front cover on the bottom, face up, back cover on the top, face to face. And then you're going to take it and you're going to put it in the binding machine and do the same thing. Except using a bit of extra care because this is very precious. This might not make sense why I'm doing it this way now, but once I show you the next step, it'll make a lot more sense why I'm doing it like this was definitely the most confusing part when I started just trying to get a good way to line it up and figure all that out. And if you do have a cover that has like printing and that kind of thing, I would definitely do some experimenting with it with just scrap paper to like write like hello on it with your own writing on the front and back. And that way you can kind of experiment and kind of see how it works if you're not sure about it. I know this isn't the best example because the back and the front are the same and there's no right like there's no right way up basically so I hope that makes sense but I think you'll understand it better in the next step. So now we've got these punched take it out of the machine and just lay it flat on top of the pages and that way all the holes will line up perfectly whereas if you do it uh, another way it'll be a little not terribly it might be a little more misaligned so I find this is the best way to get the consistent beautiful punch you deserve. So next step is this. All the machines have this little comb on the front where you can hang it. Um, this is going to be too long for now but I find it's easier just to punch it after you get the pages in. That way there's no guessing and less of a chance for mistakes. And you just hang it like this or if you're pay if, if you have like a smaller book you can just do it all in one shot but because my book is a little thicker than the average bear we're gonna go like this and then you basically just hook it through with the little combs make sure everything's right way up and you're gonna want to make sure that your cover and back cover are on the top of it so once they're like that you can dangle them like this so you've got back cover front cover and then all the pages through there and then you're going to want to take, that was not a very good cut, oh my god, why is, why are you failing me, I've never had this, I don't know where that went, <laughs> so now you got it cut down to size and dangling like this, and you're going to do the next step, which is the cinching, which is basically just squeezing these wires together so they form a circle. So to do that you're going to need to switch the setting on your machine. Mine's on the side over here. You can tell there's different measurements that has like the ratio or the inch. So mine is the biggest one so I'm just going to turn it to that. You might need to test this out and see which one works for your size and your bindings. We're going to take it like this and we're going to put it into the little clamp up top. I like to push it in to make sure everything's aligned so the C is perfectly aligned. The C is perfectly aligned with the back of the cinch. It's such a fun word to say cinch. So once it's in and you're pushing it forward, you're gonna clamp it down again and that should move your clamp on top. And then once you do it once, it's probably not fully cinched. Not fully cinched. So you're gonna need to do it a couple more times until Fully closes. Be careful. Um, you want to be careful because you don't want to do it too hard because then it'll go like this and overlap. But you want to make sure you get it touching 
and not like this because if it's like this the pages will start falling out so we're going for this not this just gentle I like to flip it back and forth because I feel like it makes it more even but there's it's not a proven fact there we go so see it's touching but we're not overlapping on the edges. You want to be careful that you don't. If you aim for perfection, sometimes you end up with this. So this is the part where it makes sense why the back page is on the front. So once it's done, you're going to flip it like this. And that way all of this, the little connector part is hidden. And ta-da, you have a book. So I'm glad this one turned out. Sometimes they're really difficult. If it doesn't work out, you just put it back to the way you had it in the machine. And then you take these and you open up each little arm and then you can take it off and try again. Um, you, I've tried cutting it. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't cut it. So you just kind of like pry each one open. I use these to do it. Um, it does take a while, so you have time to think about what you've done so you don't make the same mistake next time. <laughs> I say that, but I still make the same mistake all the time. Okay, so that's it for the how to bind part, but if you're interested, I'm going to go into a little more detail about the machine and what all the knobs do and kind of how to operate it. And I'm also, oh, oh I used it, going to go into more details about how to buy the spiral binding. It's very confusing if you don't, it's not confusing when you know it, but like online, if you're going to buy the spiral binding, there's a lot of measurements and if you don't know what they mean, it can be a bit confusing. So I just wanted to go over that because I think it would be useful information and I think it would have been helpful for me when I started doing this. So I'm just going to go over that part first, actually, because I realized that I have to move my camera for the other one. This is the wire binding and there are two measurements to it. The first one is a ratio. It's either two to one or three to one. I haven't seen any other sizes. Basically that means that machine either punches three holes in an inch or two holes in an inch. So this one you can see in an inch there's three little things that go into the holes. So the other one would be a wider binding and there would be less of these little guys. I think the only machines I saw that were two to one were the We Are Memory Keeper ones. So if you're buying that brand it seems like it's not standard to the other ones but that's definitely something to keep in mind because you can't change the distance of the holes. So if you buy two to one and you have three, a three to one machine then it's just not going to work. And then the second measurement is how wide these bindings are. So it's just the amount of pages you're going to have in it. So the measurement is basically here to here. It's the measurement once it's been bound and the width of the spiral when it's in the book. So I think these ones are 9 sixteenths, which you're not going to just believe me. I'm not going to try to show. I can't even use inches, so I don't 9 sixteenths. That basically just determines how many pages you can fit into the book when it's done. If you're not sure, I would go bigger rather than smaller. If it's too small, your pages will, like your binding won't close, your pages will get damaged, or you're gonna end up with the front cover looking like this. So if you have a front cover that's like this, which when I started I always had that, and I went and talked to a printer I get some stuff done, and his suggestion was to just get a bigger binding, and that fully solved my problem. So if you're having that problem where it goes like this, it means you have too many pages or you need a bigger binding. Also, it will estimate the amount of pages you can fit into it. Again, you have to keep in mind paper stock. If you have the thinnest possible paper, that number will be accurate. But if you're like me and you have a thicker stock, then you're going to have to pick a bigger number of pages because the pages are thicker. So for this, I think I have 70 pages in here, but this is a 120 page binding. So in conclusion, Better to go bigger than smaller. Pay attention to the ratio because you can't change it. And if you're prob if you're having problems, you probably need a bigger binding. So let's get to the machine. So now I'm just gonna do a little more details on the actual machine. This is one I have. I'm assuming they're all pretty similar, but a little bit different. 
but this main part here is where the paper goes. You can see where it's going to punch here. And then this is an alignment guide. You can just loosen it and move it around. I'm not going to do that now because I have it perfectly placed. And then when you're punching, you just pull this lever down. It's actually in cinch mode right now. If it's going like that, you have it in the wrong mode and it won't punch. It'll punch incorrectly. I'm just going to explain this part, which is all these little numbers are for binding. Basically, this is the smallest and this is the biggest and that controls how far this little guy goes down. So if you have it here, it'll be bigger and then if you have it here, it'll go smaller. So set it to smaller. I don't know if you can see that. It goes way down so you don't want to put your wire in there if it's bigger because it'll just get squished. So you have all these settings. I'm not fully sure what all the measurements do. I just kind of tried it out and found that mine is right about here. So pretty much maxed out. And then if you want to set it to punching, that's when you have the paper in here and then you pull down and it will punch your paper. The other setting here is just how far into your paper it'll punch. So basically that's the distance from the edge of the paper to where the punch is. And then you have the fun part, which is the confetti holder, and this just holds all your paper scraps. So if you're having trouble punching and it's not quite working right, it might be because this is full. Um, just be careful when you're emptying it if you don't want to pay 5200 pickup because I've dropped some before and it's not fun. So that's kind of just the side of the machine. That's where all the knobs and type thing are. And then at the front here you have the comb. It's hard to do this with one hand. But basically when you're ready to when you're ready to put your pages together you put this here and then hang them off. So that's about it for my wire binding video. I hope you found this useful and let me know if there's anything I missed or if you have any questions about anything and I will do my best to help you out. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye bye.